of a new race to the moon, not only between China and the United States, but also possibly between SpaceX and Blue Origin and possibly other contenders. But we're gonna focus here on the actual hardware that people are making. Uh, on the left here, you'll see uh, renderings of the um, uh, crew capsule and lander for China, the Mengzhou and the, and the Luzhou. And then the right, we have the SpaceX um, human landing, human lunar system. Um, and now the temporary um, NASA administrator, um, Sean Duffy, is wants to reopen the contract that uh, SpaceX got in about 2021 for about three and a half billion dollars to build the SpaceX Starship into a lunar lander. So, um, all right. So we can see here, this is um, SpaceX Starship Flight 11. Uh, SpaceX has had um, 11 versions of Starship that they've launched in their test program um, to build a Starship, which is then needed to then make a, um, a lunar Starship. SpaceX has been the quick company to human rate a spacecraft. They did the Crew Dragon capsule in six years. Um, they got the um, first uh, demo flights or demo program going about 2015, built it, and then they did an uncrewed test in 2019. And then just a year after, in May 2020, they flew a successful crew demo mission, which then human rated them. It took about 10 years to crew rate the Falcon 9. So SpaceX has two crew rated systems. And this is the uh, Dragon capsule, which has gone to the space station numerous times. Um, so they, you know, SpaceX, you know, went from one year, like I said, to, to from an uncrewed Dragon test to a crewed Dragon demo flight. Boeing is still years late in getting a fully certified human rated Starliner. They took um, Starliner took a, a test crew um, to from. Uh, of NASA astronauts to the space station. And then they were not deemed safe enough to return the crew and SpaceX had to bring them back. SpaceX has flown over 130 orbital missions last year in 2024 with the Falcon 9. And they're flying over 130 this year as well uh, with the Falcon 9. And for the Crew Dragon, they built 13 of them. Seven were crew, crew capsules. And then there were three cargo and three prototypes. And they still have five operational crew systems. And they've had 18 crewed flights, a mix of NASA and uh, private commercial missions. China has a lot to do to achieve a 2029 to 2030 manned landing on the moon. <clears throat> They're still working on the Long March 10A rocket, heavy lift rocket that would build lift 70 tons. They have done some engine tests, but they have not put a full system together or start doing the initial unmanned test with them. They will build the um, crew spacecraft called the Mengzhou and the Lan Yu will be the lunar lander. <clears throat> These again are still being built. The uh, lunar lander, they've built a component and they've wired it up on a rig to do some rocket tests of it, but they have not fully completed either of these systems. China has two um, crewed systems. A, a one of the long mark project is is human rated. Got human rated in like 1999, um, which I think they did a, a unmanned test in 1999, and then they did the actual crew flight in 2003. So a number of years before they got that. And then the Shenzhou, which is a um, a crew capsule, which is below on the left in the um, rendering of the. Um, Tiangong Space Station that China has. And they've seen that they've um, had the docking of the um, Shenzhou, Cruz Shenzhou with the uh, Tiangong Space Station. They do about two crewed flights per year. So once every six months. So that's the cadence of Ch China's crewed manned space program. So now things have been opened up for Blue Origin. Blue Origin tried to compete for the original uh, lunar um, lander um, mission, but the NASA at that time chose to only award SpaceX. Blue Origin sued um, NASA to try and get um, a um, lunar lander program, 
and that suit took a number of months to to settle. And while it was ongoing for about like six or eight months, uh, there was a pause in the NASA program while that suit was settled. And then they did give uh, Blue Origin a a lunar unmanned lunar program, which are doing the Mark One lunar lander, seen the middle on the right, and then they are making a larger Mark II for an Artemis V mission in 2030. So they have um, started to, uh, to to build these systems. They have not flown their second flight of an orbital spacecraft. Their New Glenn went to orbit once uh, after many delays at the beginning of uh, this year. And now they might have a second flight in November Northern November 9th for a NASA escapade mission to Mars. And that escapade mission is over a year late based on delays with Blue Origin. So NASA is looking to consider a program that has had you know delays in the rocket program, delays in other missions, and think that they can somehow speed up a uh, SpaceX Starlink and, and Artemis mission um, by, by opening up to other competing systems which is pretty ironic because the SLS and the Orion systems are many years late. They originally were planning to hit um, targets in 2018 and 2019 for Artemis 1 and 2, and now they're seven years late for the second Artemis um, lunar mission, a uh, uh, orbital flyby of the moon. Um, and, and then they've spent nearly $100 billion on the Orion and the space launch system. So this is pictures of the New Glenn um, rolling out to the launch pad October 8th, the second New Glenn. So the cadence between New Glenn launches is currently 10 months to 12 months, assuming this thing goes in November, and it could be uh, even uh, later. Um, it could be like, um, you know, if they slip into like January or something like that, it could be like a year delay between launches at orbital craft. They do have to launch, uh, the, um, many of these Blue Origins, because they have many commercial contracts and they have other NASA contracts. They need to launch the unmanned Mark I lunar lander to the moon, which is supposed to go in early January. Uh, we'll see if that succeeds or not. And then they have a lunar rover mission for the middle of 2026. And they have a lot of uh, commercial missions. Amazon Kuiper wants to launch thousands of satellites to compete with SpaceX Starlink. And AST Space Mobile wants to compete on the um, on the uh, direct to cell phone system. So the AST Space Mobile has some um, prototypes up there, but they need to launch their actual system mainly in 2026. And their plan is to rely heavily. Ten of thirteen missions will be dependent on New Glenn in, in their current plan, but they have a backup of fault going to. Um, SpaceX Falcon 9s if they if New Glenn is not flying. So New Glenn owes other commercial vendors a dozen launches or more. Um, and they have not flown yet. So then you'd be dependent upon them to certainly add four or five certification missions um, and an actual mission um, to Artemis in, in that time frame when they have not been launching anything yet. Also, the Lord needs to get a uh, NSSL phase three certification for De Department of Defense missions, and they need to get 10 to 15 flights by 20, 2027. And again, they're working on their second flight. So any um, manned Artemis mission would probably need about five uncrewed missions. Um, three would need to be out by the moon. In theory, you might be able to get away with not doing some uncrewed missions before you went directly to your uncrewed uh, lunar missions. Um, but that's uh, that would be a pretty risky thing to do, um, and you'd be in some kind of rush to achieve it because you do want to have a very very safe craft to to take astronauts from the moon. The Artemis three mission involves launching the SLS space launch system, the rocket they've been working on for like fifteen years, um, to lunar um, to Earth orbit, and then to then go with the the Ryan capsule out to uh, lunar orbit, it would then dock with either SpaceX HLS or Blue Origin or whoever, whoever else was competing, and then to then land on the moon. 
Artemis three missions were created around 2017 and were originally going to be some kind of um, going to a halo orbit around the moon. But then they said, let's go for lunar landers, making the change in 2020, 2021 to say, let's on the third mission of this Artemis program uh, land on the moon as opposed to just hanging around the lunar orbit. Uh, so that was a change and they did not give SpaceX a contract until uh, 2021. So they're only four years or so into that um, uh, HLS contract. So everything else gets delayed in, in NASA, but now they want this thing to be in a hurry, um, political reasons to get a um, lunar mission, a manned lunar mission um, in this current uh, administration, and also to be China, which would be in 2029, 2030, in the optimal case for China. Um, so this is a unmanned uh, Pathfinder mission for Blue Origin, the rendering of their um, lunar land, which again, unmanned, they'd have to modify it and build another one. And it's taking them, you know, eight months to a year to build these unmanned systems. They have to make a manned one, make a, a new manned capsule, which they are working on for the for the Mark II, but that's again for 2030. So they have to like accelerate these pieces and make something reliable um, and on time uh, for a program. So, um, so that, that's the that's space race. Uh, it seems unlikely <clears throat> that um, um, Blue Origin could speed up what they're doing because, you know, the time between launches, they haven't, you know, gone to a monthly cadence. They're still at about one launch per year to orbit and they have not even, you know, you know the second data point. They haven't done the second launch to orbit to give a cadence. While you do have cadence for, for SpaceX where they're launching every month pretty much for the, um, the Starship. And they need to get Starship launching twice a month and maybe even once a week, which they've shown they can do for Falcon 9. Falcon 9 has launched multiple days in a row every day in, in a week, um, three or four in a row, I think might be the record. And they have done on a regular basis, one launch every two or three days for an entire year. So we'll see who can be the race. My money, of course, is, is on uh, SpaceX that they will succeed in uh, speeding up the program through 2026. And it'll be well before any attempt for an, the start of an unmanned com competitor um, to get certified for a human rating. So 2026 will be a very interesting time to see how quickly uh, SpaceX Starship can do its uh, orbital certifications and do its uh, refueling and, and other test missions leading up to that. They have a busy manifest of doing all that and launching version three satellite and hopefully having spare launches of about um, five to 10 for an attempted uh, unmanned mission to Mars. So they really want to launch um, Starship about 30, 40 times uh, next year and then going to higher cadence for that. So join us next time, we'll, we'll review more about um, space technology, SpaceX, Tesla, and, and other technology developments. And thanks and talk to you next time.